This is our beautiful sweet beta Luru right next to the side of our home. It is a nice herb to uh, use in our cooking. Well, when I'm cooking, uh, but it's also a nice privacy bush. And uh, I pruned it kind of heavy uh, a couple of times. I don't really touch it much, but as you can see, it is starting to push out some new growth. One thing I will say that uh, Sweet Bay does have a nice little uh, aroma and also flower. Um, if you ever seen a Sweet Bay um, flower before, it has a, a tiny white flower with white petals. Very interesting, very interesting. Right next to it, we're starting off the citrus hedge, uh, or some might call it the border. And this is the famous Aurora Satsuma. We harvested almost every citrus off the street but one. And um, I still got to do some touch up on it. But uh, as far as it put out new growth, it's a little bit of new growth coming in. Just a little bit. But the uh, last fruit on this tree is, I think you can see it, it's hiding right there. And then next to it, we have the Washington Naval, a nice, easy citrus to grow. Uh, it is starting to uh, put out all new leaves and uh, all uh, some flower buds. As you can see, it's starting to bud out. Here is a blossom. In my growing zone, uh, it starts to bud out uh, new blossoms in late January. We're in zone 9B. Uh, here in California, and you can see uh, we did have one blossom. And I just want to show you what it looks like up close for those who don't believe me. And then, here with the fruit, we seen some fruit. This is the famous Myra lemon. We still have fruit on the tree that we have not harvested. As you can see, the longer you keep it on here, um, it does get some spots, but it's, it's healthy. We we have harvested a lot of fruit off the tree, and um, these new flowers again. I'm still learning about this Maya lemon. It's very finicky sometimes, but it's a great tree to have. Uh, and then the last citrus here is the uh, blood orange, the dwarf, semi dwarf blood orange, uh, sanguinella blood orange. And this is, I call my bonsai tree. Well, as a full grown bonsai, because I'm letting it do get back to how it used to look. And I hope I can show a picture of what it looked like before. But this is the single another blood orange. And then right next to it, we have the Jubilee uh, blueberry bush, which I had to pull back heavy. Uh, um, a lesson learned uh, with this because it doesn't like full sun <laughs> in my in the area that it was in and so it had a lot of dead back on it but it is starting to uh, put out some buds and I'm hopefully I'll learn to uh, propagate this and then also purchase some new blueberries in the future not no time soon and then this here is the dead looking uh, raspberry that we have had for several years and we got four, we got some veggies some of my brassicas the mustards the, uh, the calendula which is a flower and then here is the raspberry shortcake that I placed here and I'm actually supposed to be moving this out of this uh, grow bag placing somewhere else but um, I took some of the, the candies and um, put one back there and some other places. But here is the uh, tree collar. This is a tree collar grown from seed. Uh, I believe this is a green tree collar. And then some mustard there. And then I'm moving some things around. So that's why you see a little mess here. But this is the black stat and blackberry bush doing list and it is doing well I need to still finish pruning this 
it flowered this winter which is kind of weird I uh, never knew that it would flower but it did and it's still and it also kept some of its leaves okay and um, it's right in conjunction of the grapevine which have our sugar dwarf uh, sweet peas look at the flowers look at that it's so pretty I just want to see how it will look for an experiment because we don't have a trellis so I'm using nature <laughs> in order to keep it um, this you know farm and what would not okay so that is part one of our garden let's keep moving right here in this bed uh, well, this bed here is going to be the berry bed uh, and flowers so what I'm going to be doing gradually adding more berries and whatnot in this bed but we have our a mixture of our brassicas still in this bed which we need to harvest but we have our, our mustards uh, giant mustard curly southern mustard and then we have our collegia that's flowering and this is the early stages of our chamomile that's going to stay here uh and then next to it is our strawberries now that's it that's that you can't see that's flowering um and then over here is the, our where we collect our rainwater and that bed there we have several fig trees guys so this is the first fig tree this is the desert king and back at that desert king i have a tree collar of a this is a jolly a second jolly there this is a green tree collar back there's the blue for those who are wondering right here that's waking up and that are like a skeleton is the white vanilla hydrangea okay and then back here behind that bush is star jasmine as it has been pruned back heavy i want to keep moving as quickly as i can and just move back to show this beautiful tree here this is the stand i would say ever bearing uh that mulberry that we have had now for two years and guys the amount of growth that this thing uh has put on is amazing i'm going to say this but even though it's is meant to be in containers um i think it just should be just in the ground but i think that with it being in a container it can um uh, basically maintain its growth habit a little bit better um, because if once it goes in the ground it's a wrap <laughs> it is a wrap then this can go as a tree or a bush you all uh, but it has fruited once you know? but uh, yeah I can't wait to see what it does this year for us in back of it we have this beautiful what we're gonna name Pluot and my fingers are definitely crossed with this tree uh, because we have always have gotten fruit from it but it never holds its fruit um, to the, its mature stage and so I'm hoping that it will fruit and hold its fruit this year for us and we'll be able to consume it for the first time now back here uh, we have several tree colors uh, and I'm not I, I'm going to do this very quickly we have a dino kale tree collar a purple tree collar that's flowering a green tree collar a green tree collar and then the red tree collar here right over in this section we have a bed that is just ba um, bare right now uh, next to it is our culinary oregano sage and thyme that you see there and then over here we have some more uh, tree collar this is a tree collar from seed and we have our grocery store onions that we grew from seed and then we have propagated there this oregano here planted there and it's actually grown guys it rooted for us which I'm grateful for that oh uh, this year I found out that slugs like potatoes leaves and so it has consumed uh, all the 
and eating all the leaves. I have not, again, I have not been back here a lot lately, but I got extremely busy. Uh, and then over here we have some beets, Detroit beets that we grew from the seed directly in this container. We sowed the seeds and they, this is how it looks right now. Big and lush. And then back of here, okay, is another fig tree. And that is the Desert King. I mean, no, that is the Kadona, one of my favorite fig trees uh, that I actually pruned. It's the only fig tree that I pruned, and it's awakening. And then there is the lemongrass that needs some help. We're gonna move back and be very careful. Uh, and this bed is our garden. But I'm gonna keep moving. I just show you that back there is a desert is the brown turkey i keep calling everything desert king today for some reason and i want to move back again because i want to show you this beautiful tree then there was a plum a beautiful um, uh, plum and the most one of the uh, most famous plums in the united states i will say i don't know about the world but this one is consumed a lot by a lot of uh, uh, plum lovers um, is sweet and tart uh, as you can see we have clusters of flowers and it's also trying to push out some new leaves and again see right there and then again this bed is Kalingia and some a green another green tree color that started to bud out I have garlic chives there I have another tree color that's growing there back here all the way in the back is the brown turkey here that that started to awake as well and then over here is azalea and a surprise here in this bed it was collected our leaves and i threw in some potatoes and look what happened <laughs> we got free potatoes y'all now this is funny because these potatoes was looking kind of hit and I just and, and we left them on our counter for too, way too long and uh, I just threw them in here I don't remember what type of potato it is all I know is the potato and I'm going to hopefully harvest those potatoes from this bed uh, but let me walk back here because I want to show you another tree this is Curly Sue this is a tree collet that I named and hopefully it'll come, uh, it will leaf out some more. I harvested the mother out of this thing. But right now here, we have a volunteer. It looks like a raspberry, I'm not sure. But right next to that is, uh, is the gala apple tree that you can see. Okay, this is the gala apple. And, uh, it is also engulfed with sweet pea, sweet peas, dwarf gray sweet peas, and you can see that. All right, this is a little bit of got an apple tree that is huge, and then down here is our strawberry and asparagus bed. I pulled back the asparagus, so all you see now is all the strawberries. And right next to it is uh, Profiyanka, uh pomegranate that is starting to wake up as well and slowly push out some leaves.